Red Sonja was released in cinemas in the summer of 1985 upon the mixed reception from genre fans and poor reviews from film critics, faring better on its home video release than its theatrical run. Over time, Red Sonja gained a bit of a cult following. Though many regard Red Sonja as one of the worst movies ever made, others have branded it a guilty pleasure or a fun bad movie. Red Sonja co-star Arnold Schwarzenegger deemed it the worst movie he ever made. In my opinion, I think old Arnie is being a bit too harsh, judging more on box office receipts in comparison to his other more profitable films, rather than the film's campy charm, which is much more in line with Conan the Destroyer, which was more toned down than its predecessor, Conan the Barbarian. As the back of the DVD box boasts, Sonja leads a glorious quest in a magical land where fortress walls have faces, dinosaur bones form a bridge, a lethal mechanical serpent rise, swarming minions follow a vile queen, and where heroes lay claim to legend. Mad About Superheroes presents comic book movie flashback, Red Sonja. Red Sonja is a sword and sorcery film directed by Richard Flesher, based on the character of the same name reimagined from Marvel Comics by Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith, based mainly on the character created by Robert E. Howard, who also created Conan the Barbarian. Though Robert E. Howard's stories came first, the popularity of the Conan and Red Sonja Marvel Comics of the era were instrumental in getting the respective films greenlit into production, hence this video's comic book movie flashback title. The film introduces Brigitte Nielsen as the title character. However, the role of Sonya was initially offered to Sandel Bergman, who co-starred along Arnold Schwarzenegger as Valeria in Conan the Barbarian. Bergman instead opted for the role of the villain, Queen Gedra, feeling Sonya was too close to her previous role as Valeria. Though her choosing the part of Gedrin is understandable, I would have loved to see Sandel as Sonya. Not only is she a beauty, She's also one of my favorite characters in Conan the Barbarian. Her performance as Valeria is often overlooked whenever strong, capable female characters on screen are talked about or praised. She deserves much more attention. Do you want to live forever? Taking place in the same fictional timeline as the two previous Conan films, The Hyborian Age, Sonya, a young red-haired woman, is raped and left for dead by soldiers of evil Queen Gedrin, who murdered Sonya's parents. Answering her cry for revenge, a red goddess appears to her and gives her heightened strength, stamina, agility, and fighting skills. She trains under a swords master called the Grand Master and is distrustful of all men other than him. Sonya has vowed to never lie with a man unless he defeats her in fair combat. At a nearby temple, Varna, Sonya's sister, is a member of an order of priestesses who are preparing to banish a mystical light-powered relic. The talisman can only be used and touched by women, but has become too powerful to control. However, Gedrin's army slaughters most of the priestesses before they can imprison the talisman in permanent darkness. So this can make worlds or shatter them by storm and earthquake. Have it lifted out. Lift it out! Varna watches Gedrin steal the talisman and imprison the surviving priestesses in the vault that contained it before escaping, but is mortally wounded. She is discovered by Lord Kalidor, who goes to find Sonya and bring her back to Varna. Before dying, Varna tells Sonya to find the talisman and send it into darkness before it ravages the world. Calador asks to join her. Initially, Sonya rejects the offer, but later becomes more flexible due to Calador's persistence. If you yield only to a conqueror, then prepare to be conquered, little Sonya. She also meets others with similar goals, such as the young pig-headed Prince Tarn and his servant Falcor who say that Gedrin used the talisman to completely decimate their kingdom, Hablok, when Tarn refused to surrender. The four warriors intend to use their combined strength to seek out and bring down Gedrin and her army of fanatical followers. Red Sonja is a light-hearted, fun fantasy adventure, not to be taken seriously, much more in line with the aforementioned toned-down approach of Conan the Destroyer and the more fantastical elements of its Marvel comic book counterpart. Fitting in well with the likes of Beastmaster, another personal favorite of mine. 
Red Sonja doesn't really explore any new territory in the sword and sorcery genre, and follows a lot of movie cliches, especially the standard revenge plot. Although that said, the film definitely has a lot of fun with those cliches. You are a fool. We could have ruled the world together. Now I shall rule alone and you will die for what you did to me. What I did? You slaughtered my parents like cattle. My brother, my sister. Vermin, what were their lives compared to this? You are mad. The talisman will destroy you. The always impressive Arnold Schwarzenegger returns to the sword and sorcery realm as Kalidor. Though I'm not sure why he couldn't reprise his established role as Conan, considering Red Sonja is basically Conan's female counterpart, and famous movie producer Dino De Laurentiis produced both Conan films as well as Red Sonja. And Red Sonja director Richard Flesher also directed Conan the Destroyer. So anyone's guess is as good as mine. As a matter of fact, when I saw the trailer at the ripe young age of 11, I mistakenly thought Red Sonja was the third Conan film, but I digress. We got Arnold back in a sort of Conan role, supporting a very green Brigitte Nielsen, who needed all the support she could get. Though Nielsen certainly looks the part and is up to the physicality of the role, her performance as Sonja, let's just say, adds to the camp value of the picture. That said, Brigitte Nielsen went on to co-star in a few hit films after her debut in Red Sonja, such as Rocky IV and Beverly Hills Cop 2. Sandel Bergman seems like she's having a ball chewing up the scenery as Gedrin, and the rest of the supporting cast does a great job in their respective roles, especially Ernie Reyes Jr. as the pubescent Prince Tarn, adding much of the comedy relief alongside Paul L. Smith's portrayal of the very patient and loyal Falcor. Prince, we are just practicing. Then let me down! Thank you. Some of you may know Arnie Reyes Jr. from his later role as Kino in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. The costumes, special effects, props, and set designs are pretty well done and are effective at expanding the world. It also has some pretty well done R-rated action set pieces, mostly nicely choreographed swordplay with a couple of decapitations, which only elevates the material if you ask me. Red Sonja also has a great movie poster. I love movie posters from the 80s. Nine times out of ten, even if a movie was bad, it usually had an awesome poster to promote it. Sometimes the poster reflected what the film had to offer, and others it tricked you into buying a ticket. In Red Sonja's case, either of the aforementioned statements are open to debate. Red Sonja also has a great heroic film score, composed by Eno Maricone, who also composed the score for Clint Eastwood's western classic The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Over the years, there's been talk of a Red Sonja reboot. The most noteworthy would be the interest and proposed film adaptation by director Robert Rodriguez that never made it past pre-production. The film would have starred Rose McGowan, who previously starred in Rodriguez's grindhouse film Planet Terror. I'm only speculating, but perhaps the less than stellar box office return and poor critical reception of the Conan the Barbarian reboot hurt any momentum the new Red Sonja project had gained. More Red Sonja reboot interest resurfaced in the years since, but to date nothing has materialized. If you've seen the original Red Sonja and thought it was a bad movie, I hope my review has at least inspired you to give it another chance and maybe view it in a new light. If you haven't seen Red Sonja but maybe skipped over it because of its bad reputation, I suggest giving it another chance, especially if you're a fan of the sword and sorcery genre. Objectively, Red Sonja is a bad movie, but I saw it upon its original release in my youth and have a nostalgic attachment to it. So if you see it for the first time, embrace your inner child and just have fun. God, Majesty, what you want? The world, I go! We must find a way in.
Your Highness learns first. I make it a rule never to take a woman unless she can beat me in a fair fight. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why not? Brigitte Nielsen. A warrior. A woman. A magnificent new legend. I hope you've enjoyed this comic book movie flashback of Red Sonja. Thanks for letting your geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thank you.